hello. What is up? Horror Vision 2020 is back again. And holy do we have a doozy for you today. Saving one of the best for last. Just a couple more to go. We had so much fun today. Me and Tommy laughed so hard. We have the our guest today. He's absolutely incredible. I feel terrible. And he's probably going to give me crap for getting this out way longer than what Tommy said. But like I said before, we opened back up. Things are getting back to work. I hope you're working as well. I cannot wait to talk to you again. You are a pure joy, dude. Absolutely amazing. Watching this interview is like going back in time and just laughing all over again. Um, he is probably one of the best visual and special effects artists out there, makeup department, uh, you name it. Just recently, uh, is hopefully we get to see his uh, uh, short film, Remote Viewing, um, that he also is the director on. I believe, I believe it's your directorial, uh, directorial debut, Slow Down Brain, Open Up Mouth. And from the clips I've seen online, it looks like it's going to be incredible. So let us know when it happens. Um, he definitely wants everybody to watch the Japanese version of Pulse, which is absolutely terrifying. One of the best Japanese movies out there if you love horror. Um, we talk about 19, the year 1982 and how many influential sci-fi and horror films came out of that year alone. Tune in to listen to that part. Um, David Cronenberg, you know, like everything he did in the late 70s, early 80s. So we, he's, we had so much fun talking to this dude, and he's worked on so many, so many things. Avatar, which uh, is pretty funny, because he has some, some very good things to say about that. You know, like uh, Blade Trinity, uh, The Thing. Uh, one of his favorites that he ever worked on was Galaxy Quest, um, which is an incredible movie. Uh, the des creature designs in that are absolutely amazing. He has done so many things. You have to watch this interview. You're going to absolutely love it. Excuse me. Because he is the man. He is the man. Tommy will say the same thing. It was absolutely incredible. So I cannot wait for you guys to tune in and listen to all the shit that he gives Tommy. That, and, oh, I'm just laughing thinking about it. So here we go with the honest straight shooting Jordu Shell, let's get to it, boys and girls, horror fans, and everyone alike around the world. Tune in right now. You see me? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Maybe I have to enable the cameras. Yeah. Shit. That's what it says. This is a PSA for Jordu Shell. Please tune into his Instagram, follow him there, and if you want to buy some of his amazing, amazing products, go to jordushell.com. Thank you. Buy his shit now. Ta-da! <laughs> How you doing, sir? Mommy and James, what's up? How much, man? <laughs> Jordu, so nice to finally meet you face to face. Well, I did meet you at Horror Hound a few years ago, but you wouldn't remember me because... Just one of those silly fans going, I love your work. <laughs> well, thank you. Do you. Am I a little blown out? Do you want me to turn off some lights or something? Uh, it, looks, it, just looks, uh, it looks a little like uh, it looks, gray. It looks washed out. but Like I mean, a little washed out. Hold on, let me, let me, let me see, okay. see if I can do something about that. Much better, I can tell already, yeah. Oh yeah, that looks way better. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so, I'm fat as shit from the, uh, from the, the COVID, so. Uh, I mean, fat as <laughs> shit from, in, in, from quarantine, I mean. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. fucking COVID, stupid uh, ass we COVID-19. We were just talking to someone, she's a nurse, um, but she's an actress now, and she's no, she knows five people so far that have passed. Mostly oh. all frontline workers. They're all nurses. And, uh, yeah. It's so. crazy. Well, it is. I mean, real. welcome to Horror Vision 2020, real. quarantine edition. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're, we're the quarantine edition, to give everyone a, a slice of Hollywood. <laughs> right. So, I would like to just start out. I just like would love to hear how you got started um, with the art and in the business. Well, um, I was always into monster movies and, and special effects. And, you know, I mean, I'm very much like a lot of the other guys who got into this. I liked watching 
monster movies on Saturday morning and oh, yes. afternoon. Saturday was the day. Not anymore. Uh, yeah. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but now you can see anything you want anytime you want. So it's a very different world. Yeah. But um, I, uh, you know, loved to go see the horror movies when I was a teenager. And, and uh, I was always sculpting and creating. And uh, eventually pictures of my work got seen out here and I got a job offer. So when I was 20, I mean. Wow! Yeah. So you didn't you didn't even have to come out here and struggle. You got you had a job. Well, well now hold on. <laughs> there have certainly been struggles. I mean, even now, you know, it's it's never a a, a guaranteed ride because um, work is catch as catch can. Being a freelance artist, you know, you never can be sure where your next paycheck is coming from. I mean. I'm fortunate that I have a lot of collectors and I get contacted for a lot of design jobs on movies and television, but there are lean times. I mean, it does not always, <clears throat> uh, yep. I'm not a millionaire. I don't live in a mansion or anything crazy. I'm very fortunate to have a nice studio and some good employees and, and even some interns and stuff who help out. But, um, you know, it's it. There, there have definitely been struggles. I mean, that you know, when I first got in the business, particularly, you know, I ate dollar ninety nine burritos, you know, for for weeks on end. Yeah, yeah. I still eat those. <laughs> still, I'm, I think we're all still doing that. <laughs> uh, just not. They they might be three ninety nine now. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> but I'm originally I'm originally from Philadelphia, so oh, it was a it, big change. Where where are you guys located? We 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 are we're here in LA, but Los we Angeles. are both we're both from um, Michigan. Michigan, and so we're Michigan. Know, close. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> first film yeah, I ever worked on was in Philadelphia. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, the first film I ever worked on was in we shot in State College in Philadelphia. Oh, really? What was it? Yeah, uh, it was like a small film called The Mission. Um, I wouldn't say it's a film. It's like a it would be like a student project. I drove, I auditioned it way back in the day via like an actual like VHS camera, mailed it, got the part somehow, and I drove down to State College and we oh, all- Oh, you're an actor. It. Yeah, well, yeah. Some, oh, some you're an say, actor. Some might say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you look a great deal like the guy who was, uh in Jurassic Park 4, whatever, what's that guy who taught the Raptors how to talk? And oh, Chris Pratt? Chris Pratt? I get that all the time. He yeah, reminds me of Chris Pratt, Pratt kind of. <laughs> yeah, you look I like even Chris tagged, Pratt. I even tagged him in a thing, like, way back when I was working on another project last year. Because, like, everyone on set was like, dude, you're just like Chris Pratt. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, that doesn't suck. I get Jack Black and shit, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Jack so, Black's I mean, awesome, dude. Chris Chris Pratt isn't bad, you know. No. <laughs> Actually, that's yeah, how I, I love know, Jack Black. Though how, I, I don't see it, but hey, whatever. That's Tenacious how I know people. him is uh, he was in a, a star in a couple of the movies that I directed. So he. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I looked I, you up, and I I, I realized you're you're a director. That, that's really awesome, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> director but the funny thing is i always wanted to do special effects i was on my way to come out to joe blasco school like in 93 <laughs> ready to come out here but i uh, got pregnant got married <laughs> stayed in michigan <laughs> so then i just decided to start making our own movies so i started hiring special effects artists to learn from <laughs> so i would direct it but i would learn all the special effects at the same time so well i don't know directing is i i think that's <laughs> that's the brass ring. I mean, that's yeah. the gold but it, ring, rather. But, it, but for um, me, loving monsters, I can make cheap horror movies and make my own monster. That's like the biggest thing for people is they couldn't make their own monsters. So. Yeah, but having the opportunity, you know, I just, I just, I'm finishing up my own short film. Yeah. It's very close to being done. It's called Remote Viewing. And um, I mean, we're at the credit stage now. We're almost done. Almost done. But, um, being able to contextualize the things you come up with, to me, that is 
way more exciting than just making a monster for something that someone may use poorly or they may not use it at all or it's going to get replaced by CG or it's going to be shot poorly or badly acted. Being able to contextualize yeah. your own ideas and characters and monsters, I mean, that's everything. Yeah, and that's so kudos. I never thought of it like that because I always directed. I never, I've only helped out on special effects with people. I've never really done a whole team of it. I always directed it. So I guess that's, I guess that's true because I know what I want to see with my monsters. You know, I know all right. of these things. That is like something very, like even on set, I almost always do the blood myself because nobody else can do it like I, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I just like just squirt people in the face, maybe. <laughs> like Johnny Depp always gets squirted in the face. <laughs> that's why. That's why creatures and horror, horror films and like creature films are so much fun to work on, right there. Yeah. Well, you know? I I had this distributor and he wasn't paying us, so he said, "I'm going to send you a bunch of your bunch of movies because our movies only have monsters in it." So he said, "Send me 1,500 movies." I opened them; only five were mine. They had like somebody else's stuff. He said, "Well, all your monster movies, they always get sold. So, like, then why don't you pay me? You know, well, fifteen hundred fucking DVDs. <laughs> Jesus well, Christ! I run, I run That's enough to start a video store. Well, I, right. I, the funny thing is, there's this one movie called Bad Baghdad, Texas. So, at our show, I always say." How many people have, like, you have, like, three copies of each because I kept giving them away to everyone. So everyone's got, like, a bunch of copies of that bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But I, I, the show's pretty big that we run. It's not as big as Horror Hound, but, you know, it's, it's similar to Horror Hounds. You know, yep. you get it to the You're mass. seeing a convention you have. Yeah, I run Motor City Nightmares. Oh, okay. I started Motor City Nightmares because I wanted people to see my movies. <laughs> And it kind of turned into its own thing. So, you know, we're going to our 12th year coming up. So, well, we're missing this Congratulations. Year. Missing, missing this year. What, missing yeah, this year, with, yeah. with, uh, Speaking of like this year, missing this year, I mean, is there anything that you've been working on or we're working on that plans changed? Or what, what are you doing to stay creative in, in, in all this? Well, I mean, like I said, I'm fortunate that I have a number of collectors that have contacted me and, yeah, magically have money to spend on rubber monster crap. I don't know, but yeah. you know, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I I do have time for some personal projects here and there. Excuse me, I'm going through puberty. Um, <laughs> I do have I do have time. For for a few personal projects here and there, but generally, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of orders and, and a lot of people want, you know, uh, made to order projects and, 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 you know, commissions. So I'm very fortunate. I'm in a fortunate spot and I'm very pleased about it. Well, I hope Stan Winston school pays you good. Cause that's where I, I have a bunch of your, uh, one of your classes. I did the sculpting because I learned a lot from it. I think it's that little bug, the bug guy. That's the class that I have of hers. Yeah. Well, the, no, the Stan Winston school is great. Um, they've been very fair. They, they send me residual checks regularly. And, uh, oh, that's really, you know, cool. they're a great, they're a great bunch of people to work with. Um, and they're very, they have a really good, um, a really good infrastructure. So, you know, that's, that's a, a great thing. Yeah. That's, I, I've learned a lot from that. That's why. I'm I very glad. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> that's actually how I met Steve Wang, is I got oh, in yeah? class and he was painting masks and I Facebook friended him and started asking him questions and he answered all my questions and helped me with everything i couldn't believe it you know so when i came out here he let me interview for some jobs so hopefully going to be working with him um doing production coordinating because i'm not a good enough artist <laughs> so i said I, I told him i'll just sweep the floor in your shop he's like no 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 he goes us as artists we can't get anything we need to we need to stay on track you know they, they have a hard time yeah. on track so hopefully after this COVID, with the, if he gets some contracts, I'll be able to work on a couple things. With him. <laughs> yeah. 
over the years, man, you've worked on some, some you've worked with some great directors. You were, I think you worked with James Cameron on some stuff. You worked on one of my favorite movies, uh, uh, with Henry, Ro uh, Feast. Feast. Did you work oh, on it? You know, I've never seen Feast. I, I, um, I did some, some, I did the design of this toothy monster and yeah that's the monster it is but i yeah. never i never saw it and i i didn't know it was kind of uh it's a kind of a cult classic now or something yeah it, it, i would say yeah yeah it's a lot of fun it was john, a lot of fun john gulliger i don't know if you know who clue gulliger is from uh i've like, heard the name clue gallagher he's yeah. a whole, he like used to be in Gunsmoke. he's his son is the director of it and oh, okay. he, it was wes craven that actually got him to do it on that show project green light it was right a green light yeah. yeah so it was it was really cool but the monsters we i love the monsters in that so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny that you've never seen it. the first one is great henry rollins is so funny in it <laughs> I know. So, and when i saw that i was like i gotta see get a that creature, get a creature you gotta watch it. but i guess is it hard for you when you see your creatures do you see sometimes like you wish they would show it differently is that what you were saying earlier oh yeah um well i mean to be honest it's not even so much that i wish they would film them differently as much as i wish that there was a different whole story around it you know because <laughs> so many of these like i go into a certain I mean, this gets this gets kind of arty and kind of dumb, but when I create a character, or a creature, a monster, whatever, an alien, there you have to find an artistic way in. Yeah, it's like you have to get into a mindset where you can kind of contextual you contextualize it yourself, and you get kind of attached to that concept of it its origin the mood of the the, the story it's in and it, it's always different than what the director is thinking yeah but that's that's, so, that's like romantic because that's how i feel when i'm doing it you know what i mean you want that feel and the good story and everything <laughs> that's exactly well yeah i mean to me one of the things that's missing so much from horror these days and which I found in a, a few horror movies along the way is mood. Mood is what makes a horror film. You can have a movie that's kind of eh in terms of story. And if the mood is palpable and strong, yeah. then you've got something special. Establishing mood is really what it's all about. Have you seen a movie called Session Nine? One of my very yeah. favorites. Yeah, I love man. that movie so yeah, much. Yes, Session Nine has tremendous mood to it. That autumnal yeah. feeling, yeah. and and the and the the orange and red leaves everywhere, and the yeah. feeling of that abandoned a sane asylum and um, insane asylum, and you know the the, the kind of the kind of mist hanging over everything. Yeah. That to me, that that movie has so much great mood to it, and it's yeah. very scary and very spooky. I saw it in the theater yeah. when it came out, and I I thought it was great. The sound. Another one that I thought <laughs> really awesome on that. Yeah. Another one that I thought had really really terrific mood was The Witch. Oh yes, that's a great movie. <laughs> it's just a, that's a what I've watched it like six times. It's such a good movie. Yeah, I mean that movie. That movie is something very, very special. Yeah, because that, that it, girl, those actors were so phenomenal. The yeah. actors and actresses were incredible. Yeah. But that director did so much research into the uh, the look of the clothes and the cottages and that kind of the pastoral area he shot it in and the language of the time nothing seemed inauthentic yeah and it had such mood to it, it it's one of the scariest movies i've ever seen i know yep. um all of my favorite horror films have this quality mood audition 
Oh, I love audition. What about the changeling? I love the, the changeling with George C. Scott. That's one of my you know, favorites. I love that one. The changeling, I never really liked the changeling. Like, I, I, I love know, that one. I loved it. I don't know why. I just, for some reason, the changeling just didn't really just, work. I got, it also reminds me of session nine because of the, the voice. When, because the voices in session nine are so dynamic when you're hearing the tapes. And in the changeling, I always hear Joseph, you know, when the little boy is talking. <laughs> so maybe I should watch it again. I don't know. I remember seeing it. I didn't see it as a kid. I saw it in my adult life and I was kind of like, <clears throat> oh, I saw it at the theater when I was little. So <laughs> my, my parents took me to every horror movie you could ever imagine, even if I was <laughs> <laughs> So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love, I love, uh, have you seen the Japanese version of Pulse? Not Pulse, no, I haven't. What is it called? Scary as fuck, you gotta see it. All right, good, because I love, I love Juan, I love the, you know, all of the other different grudge. And see the Japanese version of Pulse. There are scenes in there that might keep you awake. Good, I want to see it. I mean, it, is, it is, is really it Pulse? scary. Pulse, yeah. If, I, if you Google Japanese version of Pulse, it's going to yeah, be Yeah, I know crazy. exactly, I can kind of see the picture, yeah. Cover. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they made an American version of it, which sucks, of course. Yeah. But uh, the Japanese one is hideous. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a huge Perfect. fan of like, all kinds of, all the Asian, especially Asian horror, but I love the Asian, all the Asian movies, period, because my grandma loved all of the uh, martial arts movies, so I got to see everything <laughs> growing up with, the, with her. What's, what's, Tommy, what's your ethnic background? Um, I'm half Filipino. And the other half I didn't know, and then I did the DNA thing, and it's like 49% British, so I'm really boring. So I'm Filipino and British. <laughs> That's cool. But my maiden, wrong with that. My, my maiden name is Hatfield, from the actual Hatfield and McCoys. So that uh, makes me a Filipino hillbilly. <laughs> your hair is very cool. I like your hair. Thank you. Thank she you. does a good it's job usually up this way, but, you know, it's COVID, so... <laughs> Matches my background. <laughs> yeah, man, she's like, yep, so good. So, I'm white. I have a white background. Jeez, what's wrong with you? You're no fun. You're all white. <laughs> Boring. I could take it down. I have a different backdrop behind it. No, that's all right. Let's talk to Jordu. <laughs> <laughs> we got him here. We got to ask him questions. I know, right? right? So, what is your, what are your, your the, the fav, your few favorite movies that you worked on? Like your directors you loved or the creatures you made? Um, well, I worked on probably the best film I've worked on, the most memorable best film I've worked on was Galaxy Quest. It's kind of a comedy. I love it's Galaxy awesome. Quest. Who doesn't love Galaxy Quest? I know everyone loves it, yeah. But it's a great movie. Um, I mean, I've worked on tons of things that other people think are impressive, but I think they're pieces of shit. Yeah. Like, and scissor hands. We just want to hear the good ones because we don't want to bad mouth anyway. So, you know, unless you want to, then we can do it. Well, I'll do it for you. <laughs> um, I worked on Edward Scissorhands. People seem to be impressed by that. Yeah. But I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, I worked on Avatar, of course, which I didn't oh. really like. Oh, I love Avatar. I, I'm, I love all, I like too many things, so. <laughs> too easy that's okay you're a liker that's okay to be i a am liker. a liker well, i'm a liker so it's you know, well, all like, the haters like me so like <laughs> when you say like Adam, like when you like the experience was was not what you wanted or like you thought like movie. you know this is kind of comical the way they're you know putting like together it. this blue creature well i mean i just think i, I i'm referring strictly to the movie not necessarily my experience okay. Okay. my experience on avatar was good you know, yeah. I mean, I was well treated and very well paid, and it was a long gig. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I worked with one of the biggest directors in the world. Awesome. Yep. Thumbs up. But when I saw the movie, I was kind of like, mm, let's just poke up on this. <laughs> it is. It is totally it is. Pocahontas. It is. That's all it is. I didn't even think of that. That's funny. Um, I mean, obviously, that's. It, the movie itself is like it's all about the experience of that whole 3d thing uh, and then you know that's why it's taken 150 years to even start making the next ones yeah. whatever the, whatever he's trying he's trying to blow everybody's mind again i don't know are we gonna see pocahontas too 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, what's going to happen with the next ones. I don't really care. <laughs> Right. What are you Dallas doing? Quest, though, I love Dallas. I do. I do. That movie Dallas is so much Quest. fun. It's one of my very favorite that, movies. You know, everything about it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Kind of well, that time. movie, that movie, I, it came out right around my birthday in 2000 or 2001 or whatever it came out. Yeah. And it was a great birthday present to see a movie I'd worked on that was actually really good. Really good. Yep. Really I was really cool. excited by that. I mean, I, I can't stand that. Tim, what's his name? Tim Allen. Allen. But Mission I thought he was fine. <laughs> yeah. He was fine in it. Sigourney Weaver was great. And oh, she's brilliant. She's yeah. my favorite anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's my Tim order. Allen's your favorite? No, no. Um, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver. Weaver. Oh, no, no, no. She's, she's amazing. I yeah, mean, that's oh. who's amazing to me. No, Tim <laughs> Allen, no. He's, he's the Michigander that got in trouble for too much cocaine. So... <laughs> But he plays a perfect, like, Kirk character. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was perfect. So that's good. So uh, go ahead. <laughs> you ask your question. I'm waiting for you to ask oh, your question. I was, oh, no, yeah. I was, I was saying that Alex's Quest was so much fun. Go on. And it really was done quite right. And, like, you know, everything about it was pieced together. And it's kind of, you know, one of those, a good story, a good original idea. And it was, it was cool. So Let's talk about you, horror. Let's talk about most, horror. What's your most what? inspirational horror movie that you saw? It's something that like keeps like you no. always think about. Because mine is humanoids. From well, the <laughs> it is. It is because of all my, the fantasy <laughs> films yeah, because that my have dad, been made. My dad always told me humanoids never, from the deep. I could never be a director <laughs> because I was a girl. One hundred and twenty years of and cinema. And then when I saw. Humanoids from the Deep, the director's name came up and it said Barbara Peterson. And I was like, that's not a boy. So that changed everything for me. That's why it's my favorite because I realized even a hundred and regular <laughs> cinema and you go <laughs> humanoids. Creatures are cool. They still do this time. The deep. <laughs> Everything's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> Everything uh, froze. There. Uh, oh, they didn't freeze on. All right. Yeah. Quick teasing. That's enough about hey. Tommy's favorite. What What would be your favorite? What was your well, favorite? Hold on. Let me just say it's it's appropriate that the video should freeze when she says the best science fiction, horror, fantasy film she ever saw was Humanoids from the Fucking Deep. It had the most impact <laughs> on me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tommy! I don't know. At least I didn't say Slithis, right? So <laughs> that's, that's what he was gonna say. Yeah. I, well, I love Food of the Gods too, so laugh at me about that. <laughs> I like I like too many. Yeah, you're stuck in the '70s, sister. You just kind of come up with a lot of age. Um, well, I mean, there have been several that have inspired me. If, if you want to know what I think the most influential film in terms of creature design is, mm -hmm. it's by leaps and bounds, the film Alien. That oh, changed yes. everything. Everything, yeah. Yeah. It really sure. did. It, I mean, it changed things. There was creature design before Alien and then an after Alien. And yeah. it, it introduced the idea of sexuality into creature design and introduced the idea of meta constant metamorphosis into design the element of surprise that is something that unfolds or opens up and something else comes out that you don't expect i know I never you know, saw like anything like that. all monster designs now have that mm -hmm. it introduced the idea of biomechanics into design yeah. hoses and ribbing and repeating forms and bones and shit um, you know, I mean, it, 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 it is pretty much the be all end all of creature design. For sure. Um, plus it's a brilliant film, but right. great story, you know, it influenced me enormously. Like it has every single person that is interested in monster work. Right. Yep. Um, but I mean, I was very influenced by the howling and the thing and an American werewolf in London and 
yeah. RoboCop and all, you know, everything from the eighties really, really yep. changed my brain. Yeah. And I, I, whenever I get interviewed, I always mention this, but when you look at the year 1982, okay. you have such a seismic impact of fantasy cinema in just that year alone. You have Creepshow, E.T., The Thing, The Dark Crystal, Tron, Conan, Poltergeist, All Blade that- Runner, Holy Cat shit. People, The Beast Within. I remember these. Yeah. Of course, I. Love I mean that. That's just that's just some of them that I can remember off the top of my head. Yeah, because I yeah. was twelve then, so I remember all those. You know, I got my, when I was twelve. I got my first Fangoria. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was my whole life. <laughs> the thing, man, uh, that, that movie scared the shit. Cause I'm I was. Yeah. Young when yeah, I first yeah, saw that, that. but that man, is, that movie's so good. I love the thing. How old are you? Forty-one. I'm, He's forty. He's a baby. I'll be fifty this year. So. Oh wow! Well, you look a lot younger than that. Yay! I love you so much. <laughs> you seem a lot more enthusiastic than a fifty-year-old should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, human. It's because humanoids from the deep. It's okay. Yeah, that explains. <laughs> All right, I can't be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot. Evidently. <laughs> Not with that. <laughs> humanoids from the fucking. <laughs> what? Sorry, Tommy, I, I, brought know. It up. I know it wasn't because of the well I love the creatures in it but it was because the woman directed it and I never knew a woman could direct oh interesting dad, he always told me that I couldn't because I'm a girl because you can't be a director you're a girl so when well, I what about Marshall, what about Penny Marshall who's won Academy Awards and well, shit but she wasn't a director at that time back then. what about uh of course I love her now, but it was that was like a moment when I was little and it came Who's up the like, woman who directed the Hurt Locker? Kathleen oh, something? Kathleen oh. Bigelow. Bigelow, yeah. She was yeah. married to James. I Cameron. mean, they, there are so many incredible oh, yeah. I, mean, no, I, I have a lot of different yeah. female directors now, but that was the one that I realized that I could do it. You know, I have a whole bunch of them that I'm huge. Like I'm a huge. And I gotta tell you, <laughs> I got it. and a woman directed another great horror film called Near Dark. Oh Catherine yeah, Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. No, that was Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, she. That was one but, of her um, early ones. I would say that humanoid is found in the deep shouldn't <laughs> necessarily be the the All pinnacle right. of female I love, directing. Like, I, I watch. Like I love Jennifer Lynch. I like that she's a TV director now. Yeah. She did Boxing Helena, and you know, I've always. You know what else came out in 1982? What? Extra. Zydro, oh, I call it Zydro, yeah. That was cool because a full-size human comes out of that person, and I kind of emulated that in the movie. I cast him in. Oh, evil I had a offspring. Evil come offspring. Out because of that movie. <laughs> we use a huge, huge squirt gun to spray on the wall. <laughs> pretty good, actually. That movie's Extra. pretty fucked up. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love Extra. Yeah, it is good. Yep. <laughs> But I in the Beast Within too. I remember that clearly. I probably saw them at a drive-in like together. You know. But I mean, in terms of movies that have probably the movies that have made the biggest impact on me in terms of what I want to see more of, what excites me, what I think are truly great horror cinema, are almost all the movies in the eighties. Late 70s. You froze. Oh, you froze. Hold on one sec. And uh, average film I've ever seen. Okay, just in terms of ideas. Yeah, uh, everything froze up. We missed what you froze up about. We said the 80s and then it froze. So can you say that again? Everything. Oh, okay. (laughs) Sorry. The The technology. All of the movies that David Cronenberg did in the late 70s, early 80s, yep. you know, I would say that he is the greatest maverick filmmaker right. of all time and the greatest auteur. Yeah. To I loved Rabbit. I was crazy about Rabbit. I loved Rabbit, it. The Brood, Shippo, Dead the Ringers, brood. The, the brood. Fly, Scanners, yep. oh, Dead oh, Zone. And Videodrome was... Then, right? Videodrome. Yeah. You, then, you can't. 
The guy can't do any wrong. I know. Yep. I would love him in you one know, of my movies um, like he did in He kind of started a little, a little left of center. Wait, what did you say? I, I said I would love to have him in one of my movies because in Nightbreed, I loved him in Nightbreed. He was so. Oh, awesome. I thought you said he, he was in one of your movies. Oh, I was no. like, what? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that cool. <laughs> but I um, some of my movies. <laughs> and D. Wallace, he, uh, my friend. I, I really <laughs> seek to achieve that mood in any other film I ever make. Yeah. I tried with an extremely low budget with my film. I don't really know if it comes across, but... Um, the remote viewing film or a different? Yes. Remote, <laughs> remote viewing is the things that like the government does, right? Where they have like somebody- Yeah, they, location and in this can't... case, in the case of my film though, it's not, it's not that kind. It, it's sort of like using a puppet to see for it and do things for it. astral projection and oh, okay. all that shit. Okay. Yeah, but there, there's monsters in it, right? Or creature. There is a thing at the end. Yes, it's pretty gross. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes. Don't do the village to me. I hated that movie because I was waiting for monsters and I was so mad with there's no monsters. <laughs> that's, that's M. Night Shyamalan for you. Oh, I was so mad. <laughs> the, hap the happening? Yeah. Oh, the crappening, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you can't tease me with monsters and not give me monsters, you know? <laughs> that's like the worst, you know? That's why I love seeing all of the Godzilla and I love the Pacific Rims and, you know, all those things. I grew up on those, like Johnny Sacco and Ultraman, you know. Pacific Rim? <laughs> I do. I loved it. I didn't like the acting as much, but I love big monsters, big robots. Level of love for you at the beginning of this interview. <laughs> Humanoids from the deep. Pacific Rim. <laughs> Next, you're going to say you're really in a trauma movies or some shit, and it's going to be all. Oh, but, we did, but, we, we, but I do have a degree from the Trauma University from Lloyd because he comes to my show. But he also did an interview for us, too. So. <laughs> Everybody likes something. Everybody loves. Do you know something. anything about Lloyd? No. Um, Oh, okay. He went to He's Yale with one of the Bushes. His wife was the uh, film commissioner in New York, and he was president of the IFTA one year. So he plays that funny thing, but he is wicked smart. You know what I mean? He does his little thing, but he knows what he's doing. And he got uh, James Gunn started and a whole bunch of other people started too. And he does stuff with Jim Ojula stuff too, I think. Do you know? Oh, yeah. He's Jim Ojula, yeah, he's yeah, working. Yeah, he taught him how to pitch his his story. Ooh. Jim Ojula, he's a, a special effects artist. He did. He used to work on Buffy. Um, maybe I'm saying his name wrong. Oh um, no, you just said it right. Jim yeah, Ojula. And then, yeah, and then he just did a movie, Strange Nature. That's where I uh, I met him because ITN had me do an interview with him. So it's just a distributor. So. Do you know those uh, Saskia sisters or whatever they're called? I know of them. I've never had them at my show, but I know of them. Yeah. They redid Rabid. So I was like kind of upset about it, but I didn't see it. So <laughs> I was. It was very bad. Okay. Very, I, very I bad. Wanna, I don't want to ruin my other, because I love Rabbit as one of my favorites growing up, too. No, it doesn't resemble Rabbit at all. I don't know how you can even call it the same. Thing. I mean, it was just awful. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. But you know, they're female filmmakers. I love their movie American Mary. That was good. That was that was good. That was that's the only that I really know of theirs that I watched, you know, <laughs> so, I, I, I like I like Catherine Isabel. It's really it's really good because it's got the body, you, you know, the, the body morphe or whatever they call it when they, they do the different things to the body turn the face look like a plastic. It was really cool. Human hey center. James, are you really into horror too? I'm like in between. I've worked on a lot of horror, I like like horror films, especially with Tommy. I'm not like I don't know. She like you guys know like top to bottom everything about it. Flip the page and you're like, oh yeah, this is this. I know what inspired me, what I loved growing up. 
you know, and and I know the genre because like it's so popular. It What's is, your favorite movie? Uh, Ever. Well, you already said it. Alien growing up was like one of my that like that one was insane to me. Um, what I've said recently was the first pumpkin head. I freaking freaked out about that dude. The first one, the other one sucked, but that first, like the, 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 the character design, the creature design, like the whole way that first movie was done was just fucking creepy. Yeah. And I like, it's a very good younger. idea. I love the idea of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, like there's scenes Andrew. in that with the coloring, like when he's in the church and he's just like, just when I was a kid, I was like, get the, hell out of here man <laughs> no, i had nightmares about it yeah those so, uh, anyway. a lot of people don't know it but those things that were coming out of the shoulders yeah. were supposed to be the beginnings of wings oh. that were going to grow out of his back i didn't know that wow. that's really cool yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i worked, yeah, I know, I worked right? for a guy named alec gillis for years at a company oh. called adi yeah, yep. yeah and alec is the one the primary designer of that creature and we used to talk about it all the time and i'd say what was with the coke bottles man and he'd say well those were gonna be wings and you'll notice i mean we didn't get a chance to quite put this across as much as we wanted to but the idea was that the demon was eventually going to have lance henriksen's face it did at the end it's sort of it starts to get there but it was going to have a distorted version of his face Okay. And and um but I mean it's a brilliant it's a brilliant idea and it was really well done and I liked it. Yeah. yeah it was that that one that, I I thought I was the only one that liked it. Oh, like when no. I cuz no one ever says pumpkin head. You just when don't we ask, you know, you it's like oh the ha <laughs> Halloween, you know, Halloween Friday. Almost everyone says Halloween. Almost everyone. I'm like I'm I'm like yeah, pumpkin head freaked me out and I thought it was a brilliant idea and the creature was fantastic so yeah i'm gonna stop thinking yeah, what mine is because everyone's just gonna keep teasing me about <laughs> well are you saying that humanoids from the deep is your favorite movie no no it was just the one that changed everything for me it was what is your favorite movie see that's the hard thing is it's, be careful you're here uh, I know, <laughs> I know, because of course I was. Don't like, say oh, Toxic oh, Avenger. Oh no, See, I don't like that. Tommy likes creatures, so like, like she's all about monsters. monsters. And that's why I do love the I love Pumpkinhead. And now you're like putting me on spot. I'm like freaking out. Oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> I love Mars Attacks. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> what? But I do. Mars know, Attacks is fun. It's stupid. Yeah, but, it's fun. I love how fun it is. But yeah, Alien, of course, because I saw it at the theater. And that was yeah. amazing to me. And then, of course, who took you to the theater when you were twelve? What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> oh no, I started going to movies when I was two because it was the cheapest thing my parents could do back then. It was a buck something to go to the theater. So didn't the ticket taker say, "Why is a two-year-old coming no, here? What's going they never, on?" They never asked. What? You're with your parents. So you walked up in your diapers and you went into R-rated movies. I don't get it. You marry me. <laughs> the movie i remember like my mom covering my eyes was the kentucky fried movie so they even took me to those <laughs> what the hell man it's like a long <laughs> kind of thing. i know right so yeah my parents did this to me <clears throat> it's their fault that's why you're so happy you're insane, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> you lost dead. your mind years ago. Like evil Dead with a girl smiling and she's going back. Yep, that's me. Yep. <laughs> I think it might be. Fuck, man, that's terrifying. You know, <laughs> my my sons, because I have four sons. My sons grew up on on our sets, so they've seen all of the move. You know, that's all of the stuff that they've seen their whole lives. So I've scarred them, yep. and they're all pretty much my. Well, this son works at uh, for Panavision at Light Iron, does digital intermediate. And then my other two sons are at visual effects school. Do you know who Tom Flattery is? He does some of the weapons for Infinity Wars. Yeah. He's their professor there. So Do you own your own camera? <laughs> um, I have, my son's got cameras. I, I can, you know what I mean? I just rent them if I need them. But, and then I have my youngest son with me and we're, we're writing stuff. This summer we're writing a little series, like a supernatural, but with kids, more like a monster, monster squad. Do you shoot on an Alexa? I, yeah. 
I, yeah, I use, I don't shoot usually. I hire someone to shoot. <laughs> so, I, but I mean, you don't know what kind of cameras you get? Yeah, well, before, well, when I first started, it was the stupid little XL1s, then I turned into the big HD Sony ones. Damn. Then Damn, it goes down the reds, you know. So ah, I yes. Shot on all of them. I shot on all. Good of them. for you. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I started out automotive. I did commercial work. I started doing script supervising and makeup, so I was yeah. working with all the directors directly. Awesome. <laughs> Most of the stuff. I just shot something with a Black Magic. We shot a boxing documentary a couple before coronavirus, but we used you know action cameras and the Black Magic, and it's. Those are pretty good too. Yeah. What's For black magic? What is that? It, it'd be it'd be like the reds. It's the other red. It's like the, it's red, the, it's the red, but it's like the same color. same technology. The red headed stepchild. Yeah. <laughs> is it even cheaper the than the red? Oh, it's yeah. cheaper than the red. Yeah. Than the red, but it has some of the same qualities of it. Yep. So. Does it come with a lens package or no? No. Uh, it, you can buy it. You, buy, you buy the body yeah, you, and then you, you, you buy the body and then the lenses. You can get it for like three, four, four thousand bucks yeah, or something. Are you, you serious? Can rent, yeah, you can just rent lenses for those too. So you can rent yeah. it shoots as nice as the red, the three or four thousand so. bucks. Yeah. Well, yeah, we covered I've never bought one, but that's what I was told. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's food for thought. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, you know, part of the things that I do is I produce and I work with other filmmakers. And I work with distributors because that's the only way that I had was able to make my movies was to befriend distributors. So I have some distributor friends that definitely are right now need product, anything, right. you know, anything you can give them. You know? So just let me know because they're, they're always ready, especially if you can do it for a low amount. You know, sometimes they buy it for cash. I don't know depending on what it is. But right now, if you can get some product out there, it's going to be fun. How do you raise money for your films? Um, before I did independent monies, but um, I've done Kickstarter before, which is very hard unless you understand it. And I don't understand it, so I don't do that. Um, and then just distributors um, financing it. And then I just get hired on projects sometimes. So, oh, great. And I don't have to know for those, you know. <laughs> but I do have, because I've done a lot of interviews, I work with different financiers around the world that if you have certain pro if you have certain things attached to it, they'll finance it as long as you go to where the tax credits are. Because I work with all of the the contracts and everything. So like if we go to Louisiana or we go to Georgia, hopefully Michigan will get their thing back. New Mexico has a good tax credit right now. Mexico's hot right now, yeah. New Mexico. And it's and it's actually very hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, one yeah. one last question, and then we can get back to questioning me. But do you find that um, that shorts can help you get distributors interested in your work? Okay, a long time ago, no. But the the diff, I think the with all of the new technology and all of the stuff, uh, shorts even can make money still now they have certain channels that you could put them on and you can make money from them. So they, they will, they are like the best calling card that you can do, unless you can make the pilot for the show, you know, <laughs> but they are the best calling card. Right. Yep. If you can yeah, make, that. make that, that's because then you can walk in or have your agent or sales agent walk in and say, this is what they can do. How much can you give them to make this a feature? Right. So, yeah, especially somebody that like you, because you have, so much more than you probably know of behind you because people will just look you up on IMDb and boom, it's, it's yeah. like, there's a lot there. So if you need any help, then let me know. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm always working no matter what. <laughs> I nope. know. So, but, and I've only been out here a year, right? <laughs> So yeah, she she moved out here a year ago. I've been out here thirteen years. Yeah, but I struggles just, always I up and down. It, right. <laughs> no. When did you move out here from Philadelphia? Back in the like when when you were twenty. Nineteen eighty nine. Oh, so wow. you're about the same age as me? <laughs> younger? Well, I'm a little older than you. I'm fifty three. Oh, okay. Oh, really? See, you I don't guess look I was twenty one when I moved out. 
1989, yeah. That's cool. Right. <laughs> 1989, that's awesome. So what was 89 like here? Um, well, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't that different. It was still a sun-baked nightmare. Yeah. Um, it was still... I mean, it was the it was the tail end of the '80s, and you know there were. I don't know how does it differ really. It's gotten a lot more built up. Yeah. And there are a lot more fucking people. Jesus. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so well, many more people. That's gonna change in the next year. I have a feeling. Yeah, it's already <laughs> changing. There's a lot of them missing now, right? <laughs> Things are going to slow down in Los Angeles, I think, by 2020. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Think so? Who, who is your biggest influence, yeah. artist-wise? Like, was it someone like Stan Winston, Rick Baker, or all of them? V I know V. Neal, well, you worked with if, her on, on the Edward Scissorhands, right? I, I didn't work with her, but I mean, I, I know her quite well. We worked, we were on a face-off together when I did... Uh, some guest judging spots and she's very cool. I love V. Um, well, probably my biggest influences are Ray Harryhausen, uh, probably Rick Baker. Okay. That's my uh, assistant going to drop off the mail. Um, um, and maybe Rob Botin or somebody like that. See, he would always from the deep. He did those monsters. <laughs> and everything gotcha. has <laughs> been connected. <laughs> you know, of all the things Rob Botin has worked on. <laughs> Legend, The Thing, oh, Legend, The Howling, Robocop. Yeah. yeah. Legend has to be one of my favorite favorite creatures is is darkness. Yeah. Um Total yeah. Recall. I somehow just don't <laughs> think he's the proudest. Yeah, but you said it. <laughs> You are so fucking excited and happy all the time. Are you always <laughs> like this? I, I, I get down at times. <laughs> that is that is one you know, of all the people that are happy like this. We have our darkness in us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean Jesus happy. Christ. I don't know if I ever had that much energy even when I was in my twenties. <laughs> well, you know, I'm newly I'm newly single, so. I have the world is my oyster, right? That's supposed to make you depressed and unhappy well, I'm and sad and miserable. I'm happy, but I'm actually realizing how much better off I am now. So I got maybe. through that part. So now I'm on the other end of it. So it's good. Well, maybe there's a humanoid somewhere in your future. That doesn't matter. I'm good. I'm working. working. I, have, I have four sons. So I got, I'm, I'm busy enough. <laughs> Oh, but thank you so much for your time, sir. This has been a blast. That's it? We're done? Talking. Well, you can keep talking. I don't know. <laughs> I am done. Unless you have more. It seemed like it was only half an hour. Um, It's been 50 minutes. Has it really been 50 minutes? It's 151. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's well, just I'll tell you what my favorite movie is. Oh. There okay. we go. Don't you want to know? I thought it was Alien. Uh, Okay. No, Humanoids from the Deep 2. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. No, um, uh, no it, it's, it's actually a movie that doesn't have any monsters in it. It's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh. Because wow. it's so... Talk about mood, and it just doesn't have any... There's nothing about it that seems... Stupid. It, it's all yep. so goddamn smart. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, yeah, I love the eight man at the beginning that Stuart Freeborn did of Chewbacca and Yoda fame. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, no one's ever going to make another movie that amazing again. Yeah. I don't, nope. I don't know how. I, no, no offense, Tom. I won't either. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hi. Hey, okay. hey there Are we go. back? Yes. We're back. All right, fuck, man. Sorry, that was fucked up. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> we were, like, talking to you, and then it was just, like, you frozen like this. Yeah. And I thought you were just teasing us first, but, you know. <laughs> but um, two, 2001 Space Odyssey. Are you frozen again? No, you're there. There you are. Wait, well, I don't know where it cut He's out. He's messing but... with us. He's messing with us. Okay, <laughs> 2001 a Space Odyssey. <laughs> See, you're making me laugh so much. That's why. I don't know if he's frozen or not. I can't tell. I'm here. Yeah. Is I'm it? not. Okay. Um, I'm, what am I connected to? Is it my connection? I No, I think it. I think it's your Wi-Fi. That's okay. All right. Good it was good for the first hour, for the most part. Yes. Can you... I think he keeps freezing. But anyway, yeah, 2001 A Space Odyssey is my favorite. It's very moody and very eerie and very um, austere. And, you know, it's just really great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it is good. It that really is. It stands the test of time. That's good. So that's cool. So what I would, what we like to do is we'd like to circle back around in a few months to see where everybody's at, you know, especially after the coronavirus. Is that cool if we come back and do another interview with you sure awesome if so, i'm not dead oh you won't be is is there well, anything else you want to promote right now like you can put your website up or your um instagram or something well i mean yeah check me out on instagram uh i'm jordu shell on there j-o-r-d-u-s-c-h-e-l-l Go buy some crap at jordyshell.com. Oh, yes. Um, and I can't wait for remote viewing to drop. It's been a long, 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 long road. Well, yeah. But we're really close. I mean, we're in the last... What? Oh, as soon as you get that done and out, we can do another interview and put it up so that we can... That would be great. You know, so we can get people. I'll probably out. go to Shutter and try to have them carried in their uh, shit. Yeah, and, but we can, yeah. Do, we can do an interview, and then when it goes on Shutter, it'll promote it. So you get, you know. Yeah, that'd be it. great. Yeah, so we'll do some, always do stuff like that. So we'll one more for, question from me, though. One right. more question, Tommy. Okay. Um, is it true that you, even if you drop your movie online or wherever that you can still enter film contests uh yeah. festivals yes because i had heard that you cannot maybe it's only some festivals but some festivals are elite but there's very few like that you know sundance may be one a few others um but a lot of times the dis if you have a distributor already they may not want you to put it in film festivals because they don't want anyone to pirate i see it. but you can as long as you, you you can do as many times as you want because i know people that their movie was distributed but they still entered in my film festival because i run the international motor city nightmares international film festival great to know yeah. thank you so much cool i learned more from this than you guys ever learned <laughs> no, hit me Pumpkin, up. I was going to have wings. Wow, who gives a <laughs> shit? Um, but I learned how to distribute a fucking movie. Isn't All that right. something? Right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good. I also learned that Tommy Brunswick has hideous taste in. Fi no, I'm just kidding. Now. <laughs> awesome. Man. Oh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I love it when they. Tease me the whole time. <laughs> that's, that's really creepy now. <laughs> no, he's, not, he's messing with me. No, but dude, I, thank you so much for your time, and we'll. Well, hopefully around. after all this is, hopefully after all this comes down, all this coronavirus yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Hopefully after all this comes down, we can get together and talk. That would be yeah. great. Great, even if you would, we could do a the tour of your place too. Absolutely. That would be cool. Yep. Cool. Thank you. And I will be in touch with you soon. It'll take a couple weeks for this to come up. But I'll let you know when we really I'll tag you. I'll, you'll right. get it. Yep. All right. Thanks for a sure, lot, man. guys. Thanks. Take Thank care. you so much, man.